Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show Beach Session. I'm just going to come down and give it a go. It's blowing northwesterly, which looks more like westerly at the moment. I'm down here on the south coast beach, went to get my bait, and a guy came in and says, there's a match down there tonight. Oh, I said, how many's fishing? 60 people fishing. So, I was going to fish way down there by what they call the golf club. I'm trying to keep away from everybody now. I'm not in the slightest interested in match fishing, so I'll try and keep out of the way. Plus, there's uh, breakwaters here. If you can see, just along there, so it gives me good shelter off the wind for the microphone as well. And just look at that setting, folks. I mean, they say the fishing's been pretty abysmal. It's quite clear, the water, very slight colour. I'll take you down there. This is low tide. Now, it's low about five. It also gets dark at five. Now, invariably, you see there's nobody fishing whatsoever. They could do, of course they could do. But they had some big tides here. It's one of the biggest tides of the year. Now look how it's scoured out down here on the back flow. That's where it's been sucked back. Nice big curve out there. And it goes all the way along here. I'm hoping you can see that down there. The big curve of shingle. So there's a lot of movement there. So up there, when I'm casting at high, high tide, if I stay to a high tide, which is near enough 11 o'clock or midnight, you have to watch I don't get my... Uh, my gear buried here. It might be early on. Also, of course, I fished here many times, even as a child, because we had some property just over there, just literally at the back there. So when I was about 10, 12 years old, I was always fishing down here. Way, way better fishing than it is at the moment, obviously. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot. Just looking to try and see. Well, I don't think it's going to be long casting somehow. There's quite a steep shingle there, drop off. Don't forget, this is at low tide. I'm about an hour down from low. It's quite steep up here and it curves up and goes under there so I guess it's high water maybe just on the start of the flood. Listen I don't know what I'm going to catch you know what beach fishing is people everybody's in it the same together and we're all in it together we don't know what we're going to catch if anything at all. Fishing two big rods and I'm going to I'll probably chuck out a spinning rod as well just in case there's something small out there. I don't want a blank, I want to save the blank. That's the big thing with beach fishing. It's not the size of the fish, it's the fact that you want to catch something, isn't it? Got my rods and my tripods to sort out there, guys. They're just little spinning rods and a couple of old Coniflex rods, 30, 40 years old, 40 years old now. I've got the IMAX shelter, which I don't really need, but I'm going to put it up there because it makes me feel homely. Um, all fixed ball reels, I'm not going to mess around with beach reels, what I call multiply reels. And uh, got my little light here. Going to give me a little bit of light there. I've got a head torch. Bait wise, what have we got in here? Oh yes, we've got some nice bait, tea bags, and of course, milk. That's very good bait, it's bait for me. I've got ragworm in, rag in here. I'm gonna say that I've got some really nice frozen um, sandal, fresh frozen, and some mackerel. I'm gonna chuck half a mackerel out. So, I feel it'd be sandals first, I'm gonna try and save the worms for later. Gotta be in it to win it. It's only gonna get colder when the winter comes. And beach fishing is, let's face it, freedom and fun. Okay, well I've got uh, a half mackerel on that one out there. I don't know what I am, 60 yards out, something like that. It's a hole, it's quite a big mackerel. I was going to go for a hole one and I thought, you know, a hole one takes some lumping out there. And just while there's a bit of light left here, I'll show you this rig. It's a three hook rig, this one. It's got little attractor spoons there, if you can see that. And it's got, I think they're like a fluorescent bead or it might be a coloured bead. Either side of that. On very, very sharp hooks here and I've elasticated on there. Uh, sand hills. You can see one, two sand hills, three sand hills there. And quite stiff. This is, I would guess, it looks about at least 50 pounds, something like that. This rig, 50, 60 pounds. Down here, grip lead. You see, like, like a, a, it can grip out and I can clip the baits here if I want, but these don't have clips on them. These are just three, if you can see them like that, hanging loose. And who knows? anything can grab them. I'm trying to save the worm so while the sun has now set over there you can see it's gone down behind the Isle of Wight I can at least get one cast in for you in the daylight. Well, this is the same uh, rig on the spinning rod. It's got a couple of little spinner blades on there that I've put on there. I've got a plain bomb on this one. Hopefully you can see that, just a plain bomb. 
Going to give it a go. It's very, very big spring tides apparently tonight. So who knows? A lot of rain over there, which I hope doesn't come my way. But I'm going to get the baits out first. It's bottom of the tide in about half an hour, I think. Then it should turn and come in. And hopefully that'll add a bit of uh, movement to the water. And it should get something feeding, one hopes. Hopefully they don't come down here with a match and say, oh, you're fishing in my sport. I've, I've driven, I've come one and a half miles away from the alleged hot spot of the inn on the beach where they, I was told that uh, it's the best place, way, way down there. So I thought, I'm gonna, wherever the people are, I'll go in the opposite direction. Might not be in the best fishing spot, but peace and solitude. A bit of chill wind tonight. Now it's maybe be flooding now. It's just coming up over the... Now this one, I just want to go 40 yards. That might be 50 yards at. Might be 50 yards. See a very, very steep up here. And then walk back. I think what's going to happen is the tide is going to be a long time coming up to here. And it's going to come up and over here. And then fill up really quickly. That must be what's making this current edge along here. Scary. Tidal flow. So I might, it's telling me instinct-wise, when I see this here, big tides, it tells me buried lines and possibly rip leads all the way. You can't beat. Before you get started. Now listen guys, I spent ages lighting this with a match till Michael said it has its own sparker. Oh dear, Graham, how stupid am I? The answer to that is extremely. How long have I been here guys? 30 minutes? I drove one and a half miles away from where they said they were going to do all the match fishing. And the guy's just come up and he's pegging a match and he's pegged somebody, poor chap, about 30 yards. They've got three miles of beach, but they've got to peg a guy next to me. It's not me, I don't uh, feel too bad. Obviously I was here first, nobody owns the beach. A little bit annoying really, I feel sorry for the, the guy himself, to be honest. Uh, you know, if he starts getting tagged with my lines, because I was here first. It's not really fair on him, is it? They shouldn't pick that. They should keep away and do a different area, but they got all these zony business they have to have, so... Anyway, it's the way it is. I won't interfere with him. It's just like having traffic wardens on the beach, isn't it? But, I've got a cup of tea. That's all that matters at the moment. Match doesn't start till six, I think. Well, it can't all be bad tonight, guys. At least the wife hasn't given me a tuna sandwich. The old match is in full swing. Headlamps flashing all over the place. Guys casting out frantically, checking all their baits, making sure they've got the most perfect bait. But it looks like to me, there's nothing out there to eat those perfect baits. I've just wound one set of uh, sand hills in, absolutely pristine, untouched. They've been out an hour. My big half mackerel's been out one and a half hours, nothing. Probably going to give it till nearly seven o'clock, then I'm going to wheel them in. And I will bait up with some worms as well and see what we can get. But at the moment, very, very quiet. And the downside is, I think this northwesterly is picking up, pushing the cloud that way to the east. The moon's rising in the east. The full moon comes out. That's generally the kiss of death. But, listen, I'm out here, like all these other guys, trying. Nothing on that winding, guys. Uh, just a little tip. If you are fishing 
two rods. A lot of guys fish two rods. They tend to fish a pair of rods, big rods, or a pair of spinning rods close in. I like to mix it all up. Big baits, small baits, different types of baits, one out and one in. Now, that's fine during the daytime, but when it's dark, very often you'll cross lines. So the best way I find is to bring both in together, send the small one out first, the, the close in one first, so you're tying 40 yards first for small fish, and then you'll cast past with your bigger bait over the small line that shouldn't cross. If you cast your big line out first, we say, the big bait or whatever bait it is, the furthest distance, the longest distance, the chances are about 50-50 that you're going to cast over the top of that with your short line. Just a basic tip that I've done for years is trying to get the short line out first and then cast your bigger bait further distance rod after that so you get over the top of the inshore one. Start piling some worms on guys, but basically nothing's eating them. It's basically it's just soft. Been out in the boat a couple of trips, it's had a couple of uh, away days out in the boat, fishing off the Isle of Wight. And been in and out my cool box. And we just look, bind it and bind it and bind it, whip it around the shank, making absolutely sure you keep that hook point clear. Now there's the rig. That's the bait there. All bound up, we're going to clip it up and send it back out there. I should have come down quick. I just run up. I've run my baits in. Got a really big fish. I'll take you down there. Oh man, I hope it's still on. I've left it just above the waterline. Come and check this out. Whole, well, one whole mackerel, three quarters of a mackerel. Oh man, I should be in the match. Let's hope it's still there, guys. I've got the rod in the rest. Wind down. I hope I've got it far enough up. Let me see. We we'll do this in stages, people. There he is. Man alive is a ray. Not that far out, are you guys? Do you know what I think that's one of the biggest rays I've caught off the beach? Good big fish. Well pleased with that. And that boat's been out there one and a half hours. Well, there we go, people. Let's get this one back. Got the hook out. Wow. That's the result for Hailing Beach. I think that's the first ray. I've just realised I don't have the uh, wind muff on, so. Hopefully it's not too roaring in the wind. So obviously I'm going to put another mackerel out and sit this guy back. You've got to catch the right way without getting a boost. There we go. Big spool reel, grip lead, panel rig, half, half a mackerel. What a result, and a big way for me. Now, another mackerel tail is going on. What we're probably going to do, Paul, is uh, probably double up on those light rods and put two big rods out now. Now I know there's a chance for a ray, but I mean, I've had a seriously major result there. Over the years of making all these totally awesome fishing films, I have lost a huge amount of fish, missed a lot of fish and everything, trying to get the damn camera working. And that's once that I actually thought, do you know what, screw the camera, I want to catch the fish first. What a good job I did. 
at least you get to see it hopefully I haven't checked it yet I'll never check on the camera in case it's bad luck till I get home so what I'm going to do now I think is have something to eat I've got two rods out with half mackerel a head and a tail section still got your small baits out there I think I'm going to have spaghetti bolognese to celebrate Why me? Why me? And that's all the uh, the lights down there for the other guys in the match baiting up, casting out probably wishing they'd hooked up that giant thornback ray There we go, starting to bubble up a bit I'm quite a past master actually of sticking this to the bottom of the saucepan but I do like spaghetti bolognese and it warms you up on a cold winter's night on the beach. The secret is don't have that gas up too high, that is the secret. These little burners are really really good. What I will do is I'm going to change this wind muff guys in case I get another which is, I'm sorry, it's that one which is the standard one. I'm going to put that great big furry hairy thing on because it's quite windy and that is this giant furry one there let's get that on there for you and if I do by some obscure chance actually go and catch another fish hopefully the sound will be okay the bangs you can hear is actually uh, the November 5th or 4th fireworks going off come on come on come on come on heat up Fishing's good, you want to eat quickly, get it out of the way so you can get back to those rods. Well, if you do get a draft, there's a slight wind blowing that flame. If you get one of these things, you can fold them out, only very light to carry. And look, you can, you can shield the flames there and that will get hotter a lot quicker and start that uh, spag bowl bubbling. Light to carry, easy to put in your knapsack and on a windy beach. I mean, I've got the gore in here, but look, it's starting to steam already. Okay. And of course it's starting to stick to the bottom. I haven't turned the gas up, I just put that there to keep the draft off. Steaming hot boys, steaming hot. A bit like my fishing, steaming hot. Don't put hot sauce on your leg round. Cannot beat cook up on the beach. It's very hot. Mm. I think we can put in this, you can put it in sausages, cooked ones, and hot dogs are really good. Because they're sort of cooked in the tin anyway, you can eat those cold. If you cut them up in segments and put them inside this as well. If you want to know how I know when I've got a bite, eating this up here on the base camp, the right way down there is that I catch fish so large, it sends a tremor through the shingle. push right up the beach now at the top and uh, no other bites, it's bizarre, there's no small fish at all so I've had another brew, it's a beautiful moonlight night, normally moonlight's no good but I, I really don't rate it, but hanging out, I've lucked out, I've got a big, big radar, something but nothing else there, so I'm just going to have a kind of tea in the mince pie, I'll tell you what's happened, the wind they gave was northwesterly, going to be cold. It's definitely gone around to see where the clouds are. It's coming southwest south. I don't understand that, how they can get it so wrong. So it's pushing the waves up a bit faster. And that's called either a veering wind or a backing wind. I can never remember which is which. One's a good wind, one's a bad one. So hopefully, I haven't got the bad one. There's nothing worse than bad wind. 
So I've gone from zero to hero with one cast. That shows you it's better be better be lucky than still. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Fingers crossed we get down on the beach again. Kick something like that. I'll set for a nice big bass next time, that'll be good. And don't forget to watch my TA outdoors. It's going mad at the moment on numbers. There's something else free to watch. Hit the subscribe button on both channels and look for that little bell thing that it says it tells you it gives you a notification or something. Me, I'm gonna get that one more cast in so I don't get washed away. Wow, what a beautiful evening, what a great fish to catch. Even though there's only one. <laughs>